Late last week, the Alberta government released its hydrogen roadmap, and I'm going to talk to Dr. David Lazell, who is the energy systems architect for the nonprofit Transition Accelerator and one of the architects of the roadmap. So welcome to the interview, David. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, look, uh, this was, uh, the, the roadmap was kind of announced, uh, it was last year, we've been waiting for the, you know, the strategy, the written strategy to go ahead. This is a lot more comprehensive than, frankly, I was expecting. I think it's a good piece of work. And uh, let's talk about, we're going to want to get into the, the meat of this thing, because there's a lot here to unpack. Let's talk about Alberta's hydrogen advantage. Why does Alberta have a hydrogen advantage? Well, Alberta already makes a lot of hydrogen. We probably make about 65% or more of all the hydrogen made in Canada are made in the province of Alberta. And we make it to, because uh, we have low cost uh, sources of natural gas and, uh, and we're able to convert that into hydrogen at a very cost effective price. And it's used to make fertilizer ammonia uh, that's used in agriculture, of course. And it's also used to uh, crack bitumen into synthetic crude oil and to convert oils of various kinds into you know, chemicals uh, and fuels like gasoline, diesel, et cetera. So we already have a pretty large industry about, in the province of Alberta, about 5,400 or so tons of hydrogen are made every day and, uh, and it's used as an industrial feedstock. So the concept of actually making hydrogen but not releasing the carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, capturing it and putting it into the subsurface the province of Alberta started to do that a few years ago uh, in, up near Edmonton, and, the, and it worked quite well. So the possibility of expanding that, making, quote, blue hydrogen. But then the real interest, I think, and the thing that I'm most excited about the roadmap is that it really uh, positions the government to talk about making hydrogen uh, not only as an industrial feedstock, but as a fuel as a fuel to drive heavy trucks, uh, uh, to, to use even a fuel for space heating, for, uh, for uh, fueling trains. And I think that uh, really is actually, I think the most important part of this, uh, this roadmap. I had the opportunity uh, on Friday to interview uh, Dr. Chris Bataille, an economic modeler who had done a study through the University of Calgary about using hydrogen to decarbonize Alberta's electricity grid. And that alone sounded like a really exciting opportunity because right now, I, I think it was almost close to 90% comes from either coal or natural gas. And the ability of uh, hydrogen play a role there, uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think it's, it can act in two ways. Uh, we can build up, we have a real capacity in Alberta and actually many other places across Canada to build, to make wind and solar uh, electricity. But you know, when you really start to increase uh, the magnitude or the capacity of wind and solar that you put out in the landscape, uh, occasionally when it's a really windy and sunny day, uh, one can oversupply what you need for the grid. And so there's an opportunity for wind and solar to uh, make hydrogen because you can take that electricity, you can crack water if you like, make hydrogen and oxygen. And so it, it provides an opportunity to make what's called green hydrogen. But on the other side, you can take, you can also, use um, fuel cells or gas turbines to convert hydrogen into electricity. And in Alberta, there's, you know, there's a lot of work being done now to look at the, at the West, what is the best technology to take us from uh, the kind of en the energy electrical system we have now, which as you pointed out, has been coal, it's now moving to gas, uh, but it's very much dominated by gas. There is a wind and solar component for sure and some hydro. But the possibility of switching this thermal production to maybe using hydrogen as a uh, energy resource to make electricity um, is actually quite attractive because we have an opportunity to actually have quite a, a large backbone network of, of hydrogen supply and, and using that to make electricity just adds to the value of that infrastructure. Now, you mentioned green hydrogen as part of decarbonizing the electricity grid. The focus uh, so far has been blue hydrogen because that's much cheaper. I think it's about three times uh, less cost to make. Is the, does this roadmap envision that as the price of electrolyzers comes down and, and uh, solar and wind are built out in the province, that there will be a transition to green hydrogen at some point? 
I certainly the I mean what I read in the the roadmap and it was you know as it was put together by Alberta uh, Energy uh, and certainly there is an an opportunity there for for green hydrogen to come on and uh, and become a uh, a significant contributor to hydrogen um, in our analysis and I don't think uh, I you know I think is uh, I think the minister said that we're effectively the, the government of Alberta is colorblind. It doesn't really care whether it's blue hydrogen or green hydrogen, that it's uh, it's just interested in low carbon hydrogen and so, so uh, you know, the very low carbon emissions to to uh, be able to serve in the uh, in the in the drive towards net zero. Our analysis is the economic difference and the ability to produce it at very large scales uh, falls currently in the favor of uh, of blue hydrogen, as we think the basic infrastructure will be built out on blue, but um, as that infrastructure is built out, it opens up the opportunity for green to take a more and more predominant role. Well, let's talk about export markets. Um, and I assume, you know, we're only, Alberta's only at roughly a thousand kilometers from the, from the West Coast. Uh, would new pipelines have to be built and new facilities built on the West Coast to facilitate hydrogen exports? Yes, perhaps. Um, I think there are a number of new pipelines that are being planned for uh, bringing natural gas to the West Coast. There is a possibility that they could be used, especially if they haven't been built yet, they might be able to change a bit of the design of those pipelines and make them so they could carry natural gas or hydrogen or even a combination of the two. Um, so that's one op opportunity. There's also, a, with the technologies we have today, uh, what we would probably want to do is to make the blue hydrogen uh, in Alberta, put it hydrogen in a pipeline, send it to the West Coast, and then either, either liquefy it on the West Coast so it can go on a ship or convert it to ammonia on the West Coast so it is, gets exported as ammonia rather than as hydrogen. And so, right. so that, that's certainly the, the kind of uh, designs. The other possibility is you could make ammonia in Alberta or in, even in Northern BC or Saskatchewan and, um, and then ship the ammonia to the West Coast. It would probably initially go as, uh, as a train, um, as an ammonia train. And what kind of a timeline are we looking at, uh, David, for rolling all of this out? Uh, I assume that uh, a lot of it will take place in the like, 2020s because it seems like the government has set 2030 as a deadline for much of the, the, the roadmap to be either accomplished or well underway at that point. Well, we're going to be starting in 2022. We'll have the first hydrogen fueling stations uh, in, in Alberta in 2022. Uh, we hope to have uh, one of them in 2022 and another one or maybe two in 2023. Uh, and we have a number of vehicles just announced last week, uh, a project that we've been involved with with the city of Edmonton and the city of Strath, uh, the, the county of Strathcona uh, County are getting hydrogen fuel cell buses and uh, they'll be arriving in 2022. Um, and we got the Ace Tech trucks, uh, the large 63 ton trucks. They'll be arriving in probably late 2022 or January, 2023. And we got a few other projects that we hope to announce soon about other hydrogen trucks. So it's starting, but it's small. Right, it really is small. It's initial pilots and small demonstrations. I th by we by the time we get to 2025, 2026, we hope to be seeing hundreds of vehicles on the road, uh, or hydrogen vehicles, mainly along corridors like the Calgary Edmonton corridor. Uh, the export uh, the export opportunity. There's a real determination now to make sure that we actually have uh, exports uh, by the end of the, this decade. Uh, and um, and there's my sense is that if we're if we dally, uh, we're going to lose the market share. It'll be taken over by others. Now, uh, a point that was made in the hydrogen roadmap that I thought was interesting is de-risking technologies. I don't know how many times we've seen this in Alberta. Well, and really in Canada, where a, a new technology comes out of the laboratory, maybe gets to the pilot stage and then hits that dreaded valley of death where it's yes. not quite developed enough to attract private capital and it kind of withers on the vine. And Alberta's objective here is to de-risk it to, get, to avoid the, the valley of death. What can you tell us about that? Well, I certainly think that's an important part. Um, there are 
a lot of technology we have already that don't really need to be de-risks. You know, there's there may be a small amount of risk. They haven't been quite deployed at the scale we're talking about. So there's there's some challenges there. But there's also a lot of a number of new technologies where there's been prototype stages or, or early development that need to be taken through to get through that valley of death. Uh, you know, uh, kinds of pipeline coatings that allow us to uh, reuse uh, perhaps natural gas pipelines and use them to transport hydrogen. Uh, technologies, that I'm, some of the technologies I'm quite excited about are ones like uh, where we can actually um, basically crack methane. So we can actually make hydrogen directly from methane uh, and what we, we don't end up with CO2 that has to be sequestered geologically, we end up with carbon black, which is basically a, a powder that can be um, either taken and sold, it has its own value, but, or, or it can be um, just stored, but it's, it's, not, it's not gonna be nearly as expensive or logistically challenging to store. Those, those are some of the technologies. There's a very long list. And I, you know, hopefully the government of Alberta and Canada will follow up this report and the um, hydrogen strategy from Canada that came out last December and start putting uh, some cold hard cash uh, incentives behind it, but also attracting industry money uh, with an understanding and an, an expectation that there will be new business opportunities that will arise. Now, you mentioned government involvement. Of course, policy and regulation is always a key component to the emergence of a new industry. And in this particular case, with Alberta already being a, the hydrogen leader in Canada, uh, does there ha is there a lot of policy and regulatory development that has to be done, or is it basically tweaking what's already in place? I think there's some new things that have to be done. They, uh, you know, I think the hydrogen roadmap identified uh, that needs to be changed in the gas uh, act, right? To allow hydrogen to be mixed in with natural gas for blending purposes. Uh, there's a uh, importance of setting up some policy and regulation coordin coordination between the feds and the provinces in terms of carbon capture and storage uh, and providing perhaps tax credits or whatever for incentive mechanisms to do that. We are going to need um, more standards and regulations, I would argue, around uh, to standardize fueling uh, stations and, uh, you know, um, to, to rapid deployment. Uh, we, we're very interested in our analysis is we see the long-term goal is hydrogen fuel cell electric heavy-duty trucks and trains. But one of the things that need to really speed that transition is building out the fueling stations and for that, we need the demand. And so we are also looking at uh, trying to get the government federally, provincially, to look at implementing hydrogen diesel dual fuel uh, technologies that will we can grow very quickly uh, and helps to create the demand to improve the economics of the overall system. And, and that's really the part, there, there's, I think as we start to dig into how do we actually create this new energy system, we find out, oh, there's a regulatory barrier there, or there's a policy lever that needs to be moved over here, or there's a new standard we need to make sure that there's clarity on you know, you know, what we're doing. There's, I think, a recognition in the hydrogen roadmap that we don't quite know all what um, bridges we're going to need to cross as we start down this road, if you like, uh, on the roadmap. Well, David, this sounds like uh, very uh, exciting times in Alberta as this uh, the hydrogen industry. I was going to say as it, it gets off, uh, it gets uh, you know uh, develops, but of course it's already there, but, but expands, I guess, into these new areas. So uh, we'll look forward to future interviews uh, reporting on the progress. Thank you. Thank you very much.